What's up YouTube? This is Ultra Right and this is going to be your Mortal Kombat 1 Footsies guide. Now this was requested by the community. So here it is. Now when you're playing Footsies, I want you to think both of y'all are neutral and one of y'all is trying to land a hit. Or you're trying to get to an advantage position, get them block something that's plus, and then, you know, get your pressure going. But for this instance, I want you to think about you're both at neutral and you're trying to land a hit and you're trying to get a combo, right? So there are two main ways of doing this. One of them is whiff punishing. Whiff punishing is getting your opponent to whiff a move, and then you whiff punish them, right? You space it so your opponent moves whiffs, and then you whiff punish that move. Now, to practice this, you don't always want to just uh, practice your opponent standing in the same spot, right? You want to practice this in a footsie situation. So maybe you have Lee May walk backwards, right? And then you work on walking back at the right time and whiff punishing them, right? Because this is how it's gonna happen in match, right? You're gonna be moving like this and then you're going to, you know, be trying to create a whiff. I wasn't outside of the range of the move, so a whiff punish didn't work. And I could have whiff punished there, I just didn't, right? And then, so there we go. So that is a whiff punish. You get your opponent to whiff a move, and when they whiff the move, you punish them for it and you get a full combo. Now, the unique thing about Mortal Kombat is when you're blocking, you can't move, right? You can only block low and block high. You can't do anything else while you're blocking. In games like Street Fighter, you can walk forward, walk backwards, and... If you're walking backwards, if they throw out a move, you will block the move, right? In this game, if you are trying to create a whiff, you have to make sure that you are spaced correctly because if not, you're going to get hit in the face. Let's look at this again. If I'm walking backwards and Lee May does something like that, I'm going to get hit in the face if I'm walking backwards, right? Because... I'm not blocking. I can't walk backwards and block. So that is a unique situation that you need to think about, right? You need to space yourself correctly. So, see, I'm trying to walk back here. See, I did it that time. But that time, I can't. I can't be walking back and block. So that's something you need to think about when you have a block button. Some things the block buttons make easier, but creating whiff punishes, it does not necessarily make easier because you can't walk backwards while blocking. So the second way you're going to uh, do footsies in neutral is you're going to predict where your opponent's going to be, right? If I predict my opponent's going to be in a specific spot, I'm going to throw out a button to hit them in that spot. Why? Because they can't block and be walking, right? So if I think that Lime is going to walk up and then do something like that, right? And I throw this out there and predict they're going to be at that spot. See, I whiffed. And I predict they're going to be at that spot. Then I'm going to win this trade every single time. Maybe I hit them with a down four so I can get my jailing situation, right? So the two main ways that you are going to play footsies is one, you are going to whiff punish and you're going to predict where your opponent is going to be and you are going to throw out moves for them at that spot that they're going to be at. So, but these technically counteract each other, right? Because every time you throw out a move, you can be whiff punished. Most people aren't throwing out moves just to throw out random moves, right? Most people are throwing out moves because they think that they're going to be at a specific spot, but they might not be at that spot. Perfect example. Uh, let's take uh, Lee May again. And we're going to stick with the same thing, right? She is going to walk forward and then back... Uh, Three, four, right? Because she thinks... Right, let's set this up again, my bad. There we go. Because she thinks I'm going to be at that spot, right? And I was that time, but... And I was that time too, right? But that time I wasn't. I was. I wasn't. So, if I think... So if they think that I'm going to be at a specific spot, they're going to throw out a move to hit me at that spot. If I know this, I can use my back speed, right? to make them whiff. Like, I'm at that spot and then I'm not, right? I'm making them think that I'm gonna be there by walking forward and then I walk out of range. And then I get a whiff punish. 
So those two kind of counteract each other, but that is how you're going to do it, right? If you think your opponent's going to be at a specific spot, you're going to throw out a button to hit them at that spot. And if you throw out a specific button to hit them at that spot, and they decide to not be at that spot because they baited your move, then they're going to whip punish you. And those are the keys to footsies. When you're in the neutral, you're both sitting here trying to walk backwards and forwards. There are reasons when you watch pros match, sometimes they're just doing this or, you know, they're just doing this. They're trying to bait their opponent into doing a move because they want their opponent to think they're gonna, they're, that they are going to be at a specific spot. So, and to whiff punish, you have to be out of the range of the move, right? Because you can't uh, you can't walk backwards and block at the same time. So use your walk speed to your advantage. If you have slower walk speed, you might have to start walking backwards before other characters, right? Lee May has good walk speed, right? So I can whiff punish a lot of stuff just by this, right? But if you're using someone with slow walk speed, you might have to walk back before or earlier than Lee May will have to because she has fast walk speed. I hope all that makes sense. So now we're gonna go into footsies after you get your opponent to block something, right? So we're just gonna use the perfect example for Lee May because this is literally one of the perfect examples that I can use to show you. Her one two is plus two, right? And her one two frame traps into one two. So a lot of times the one two, if I hit a button, I'm gonna get hit in the face every single time, right? So a lot of Lee Mae, or a lot of people when they're playing Lee Mae, one two will happen, right? And they'll micro duck the one two. The first one two will come out, then they'll micro duck and they'll punish them for it. Or maybe they backdash. And there we go, right? right? They backdash it and then they punish it. But they do something to make that move with. So if I think that my opponent is going to micro duck it, I'm gonna one, two, into back two, right? Because if they go to micro duck it, they're gonna get hit. And let's show you that this leads to a full combo, right? I go to micro duck it because I think they're gonna one, two again, and now I'm getting full comboed. But now I'm gonna back dash it, right? I'm gonna to try to back dash them, right? And then I get hit in the face by a back four because, or back three, because I'm trying to back dash. Oh, I lied. So now we're going to get into the second part of footsies, right? And this is where you hit your opponent with a move on block, and there's interactions there, right? So let's take Lee May's 1-2, for example, right? 1-2, a lot of times they'll do 1-2 into 1-2 because it's a frame trap. If I hit a button here, I'm getting punched in the face, right? So a lot of Lee Mays will try to neutral duck it, right? Uh, a lot of your opponents will just try to... if. If your opponent thinks 1-2 into 1-2 is about to happen, they're going to micro-duck the first 1-2, and then they're going to punish you for a full combo just like that, right? Or they might, you know, backdash it and then get a full combo punish that way. There's multiple things that they can do. But if I think that my opponent is going to uh, micro-duck my 1-2 into 1-2, I'm not going to do 1-2 one, into 1-2. One, I'm going to do 1-2 into back. That was bad. No! I'm going to do 1-2 into back 2, right? And I'm probably going to hit them because they're going to micro duck. If they go to micro duck, they're not blocking. So then they're going to get full combo punished. And that is just one of the interactions that, um, that you can do. 1-2 
into 1, 2 by Lime is plus 2 on block. So this is 1, 2 on block. So a lot of times it'll go to 1, 2. But if your opponent goes to micro duck that, you can 1, 2 into back 2. But your opponent might not go to micro duck that. If your opponent thinks that you're going to 1, 2 into back 2 because you're expecting the micro duck, guess what they're going to do? They're going to hit a button because that's a 10 frame gap. And I'm going to get a combo every single time. Because 1, 2 is plus 2, back 2 is 12 frames, which means that there's a 10 frame gap, so I just got a 1, 2 there. But now we're coming full circle, right? If I think that my opponent... <coughs> if I think that my opponent knows that I'm going to do 1, 2 into back 2, right? I'm going to 1, 2, 1, 2 again. Because this is going to beat out the standing 1-2 from my opponent. So we just took one situation and we made it into four different instances, right? So let's go back over that. We had 1-2 into 1-2. If your opponent knows you're going to do 1-2 into 1-2, they might micro-duck it. So if I do 1-2 into 1-2, I get micro-duck full comboed. If I think they're going to micro-duck it, I'll do 1-2 into back 2 and get a full combo. But if my opponent is like, you know what, I micro-ducked the last one and they clip me with back 2, maybe they're going to try it again. Now they're just going to interrupt the back 2 with their own 1-2. And I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, go back and watch the video and watch how 1-2 one, one, landed turn into a bunch of different things. Now, there is a bunch of different situations. You have backdashing involved. What can your opponent backdash? What can they not backdash? For example, if Lee May goes to down one me, right? If Lee May goes to down one me after a one two, I can just let it whiff and then whiff punish them. I don't even have to move. See? But if you notice, if I'm blocking, I block the down one, right? If I'm not hitting a button, it whiffs. If I'm blocking, it doesn't whiff because when I block, my heart block reaches out farther. So that's something to think about too. But now let's go to Sub-Zero because I just want to show you this with a different character real quick. All right, so now we're going to do the same situation, but we're going to have Sub-Zero do his down one. Yeah, okay, right here. Down one. And then we got a, you know, reversal mode, recording. And if you notice, his down one reaches me. I can't even back dash this down one. So if I think sub zero is going to down one after this, I've got to down one myself because I will win this trade every time, right? So that's just an instant where with some characters, some things work and some characters it doesn't. Now to be good at footsies, you have to know how to whiff punish every move in the game, every string in the game, and what your opponent can and can't do after each interaction. You got to put the time in training mode. You got to play other players, see how their footsies are working, and then you will get better at footsies. So I hope this guide helps y'all on footsies, but think about footsies is you're trying to land a hit and you're gonna do that through whiff punishing or prediction. And then after you land a hit, there's a whole new things of interactions that can happen. And it's all based on what you and your opponent does. So I hope this video helps y'all. I appreciate the support and y'all have a fantastic day.